trying to morally neutralize Putin. And when I say morally neutralize, uh, the reason that I chose that phrase, morally neutralize, is because Tucker Carlson uses that phrase, what is our moral obligation to, to Ukraine versus Russia? Why should, why should I choose Ukraine over Russia? And this is what I say, trying to morally neutralize Putin because Ukraine is also corrupt, which they are, that, that, is, that is not a correct take. Trying to morally neutralize Putin because Ukraine is also corrupt is actually somewhat of somewhat of a logical fallacy here because you can't you can't morally neutralize Putin. So you you can think that we shouldn't go to war with Russia, and I do. I think that we should not go to war with Russia. I that is an opinion I share with Tucker Carlson. You can think that we shouldn't go to war with Russia while also understanding and acknowledging that Russia invading Ukraine or trying to take over Ukraine is a bad thing. That we don't want that, and that we actually have interests in preventing that from happening or even hoping that that doesn't happen, even using our just our our voices or our platforms in calling for that not to happen. We don't we don't have to completely morally neutralize Putin and what he's doing in order to convince people that we shouldn't go to war with Russia, because remember the reality of Russia. Remember the reality of what Putin is, who Putin is. Putin is a former KGB agent. That is the intelligence service of the Soviet Union. He has not repudiated that role or the ideology that underpinned that role. In fact, Putin engages in that same behavior that the KGB endorsed way back then. Putin engages in that now. I mean, think of Alexei Navalny, right? A dissident, a Russian dissident that Putin jailed, allowed almost to die. This is, this is not an isolated incident. This is any time that there is a dissident or someone who opposes Putin, Putin goes after them. I mean, think about the people who have been poisoned. And this is the only the ones who survived their poisoning. Not all of them survived it. But the ones who we know about because it was reported. Think about the in, in London, there was Alexander Litvinenko. Remember him? A lot of people don't. But he was poisoned by Putin in London. Why? Because he criticized Putin. Think about Sergei and Yulia Skripal. They were poisoned by Putin. Why? Because they were critical. They spoke out against Putin's tyrannical authoritarianism. There's a law under Putin right now in Russia that you can be imprisoned. You can be put in prison for years if you spread so-called misinformation. Misinformation, of course, being vaguely defined to the point that anything that you say that is opposed to what Putin is saying counts as misinformation. In COVID, during COVID, they required, Putin required an app that required individuals to send a selfie from where they were immediately upon request from the app to verify that they had not left their apartment. And this is something that barely got any press. Maybe, maybe you didn't even hear about this because this is normalcy under Vladimir Putin. It might be something that you and I here in the United States would be like, whoa, huge invasion of privacy, major government overreach. Absolutely not. You don't have a right to tell me to do that. But in Russia, it got very little press because this is normal for Vladimir Putin. 